Today on Podcasting Down, we continue to talk about Shield Brother, the debut album from Eisenmore. Oh, I love Do we that get royalties Eisenmore. for that intro? <laughs> What's that? Do we get royalties for that intro? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we I'll pay earn better all... than Spotify. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, if you haven't listened to the first half, go listen to the first half or not, whatever. <laughs> but uh, we discussed the whole creation of the album. It's all tracked. Now we just have to, you know, mix it and master it and release it. <laughs> so, but you, I mean, it's the easy parts. Yeah, the easy part. So this. If you're rich. So, so we were saying, we were saying it took. Uh, we started working on this album in. 2016 right and it got released in 2020 but it mm. was done being tracked in 2018 yes so uh so what happened <laughs> well why why did it take two years to get out there i i i, I almost hate to, to, to talk Don't. about this but well <laughs> okay. i uh so Originally, the original plan was Daniel was going to mix it. And uh, I think he realized, my, this is speculation, Dan, Daniel was our lead guitarist, for those who didn't hear the first episode. And he left, and he was replaced by two people <laughs> <laughs> between the time of his departure and the album coming out. So that's how long it took. It took two guitarists. So... <laughs> I think the, the original plan was Daniel was going to mix it even after he left. But then, you know, life probably happened to him. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I, I yeah, mean, I he's, think, he's a I mean, busy he, guy. He's, yeah, and like he was super generous because, I mean, he was going to like do it for us for free, which I think that was where the mistake was because. Right. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, he was oh, doing oh, it for free. Sure. It was going to be when he was not busy, which well, and, and ended up was, becoming never a thing, which. And he was also on the tail end of a Kickstarter for his own versus video games project. Um, right. And I think he was doing like one one cover a week or something on his oh, YouTube. Oh, yeah, so I it's, remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's just no there's no way to fit in a free mixing of a really of a whole album. Uh, yeah, of a fucking complicated album. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's it's not like it's a guitar, vocals, drums, and bass. Yeah, so it it didn't make, but but you know, I think there was some like mutual hesitancy there for a while, and then eventually it was like, all right, we just like so Tim, so Tim picked up the mixing. All right, uh, at so that point. when did that happen? I mean, that was probably early 2019. I'm I'm thinking. I, I think it was with Dan for like a bit over a year before he kind of like had to put like. Yeah, we we both like admitted he he's not gonna be able to finish this. Like he's too busy. Mm -hmm. So I remember it was January when I started, and I was like, I'm gonna start on such and such day. But was that 2019 or 2020? I'm pretty. I it must have been 2020 because you you turned it around in a pretty tight window to where we were it's... listening to like rough rough tracks, right? So was it two years that it was with Daniel then, or was it? I think one? it was two. Okay. Which I okay. do think, like, he also had hesitancy working on it because I think we he did have it like when we were mostly done, but we did end up having some stuff that we were re-recording. Oh yeah, so, yeah. So, we, we, so we I think we gave we gave him a very good excuse to not start working on it because right. we were like, oh yeah, we need to, we probably need to redo that. Yeah, yeah. We I think we did have a couple things that we. You're right. Had to redo and send to him within that like first like yeah. six months that he had it. Yeah, yeah. We were like, "Here you go. Wait, <laughs> no, wait. We added a new part. Wait, yeah. we added another new part. Wait, that part's bad. Yeah. So, so there's like no reason. It's like, right. Yeah, it's okay. like, it's yeah. Here it is. Really Thanks it's for like, doing here this it is. for free. <laughs> wait, and he very, yes, yeah, very wisely said, "I'm not going to start it until I have everything," because. Yeah, right. That's, that's right. He did say that, and then, <laughs> and then uh, it takes forever to get him everything. I bet gang vocals were one of those things. So, Probably. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it was. 
Yeah, because so, we were done, and, and then it was like, oh, let's do gang vocals, and he was like, well... There was some scope creep on this album. <laughs> <sighs> I never thought I'd hear that term here. Oops. <laughs> I mean, I think we did it in a pretty agile way, though. True. All right, true. so at some point, we go, all right, I'll mix it. I think we... we didn't we discuss hiring someone? Yes, and then we looked uh, at quotes. At quotes, yeah. So we don't have Duskmorn money. <laughs> we couldn't. We couldn't hire anyone to mix it. Hopefully next time. Um, <laughs> but, so uh, I took it on, and I regret that <laughs> decision because. So I have mixed uh, all up to a certain point. I had mixed uh, lots of RVG. I did not do the first or most recent RVG releases, but I did everything in, in between. I did lots of Burning Shadows. Um, I did not do Gather Darkness. So, you know, I had some experience, but, you know, those bands have one vocal style <laughs> and no violins and only a handful of keyboards. You know, so... uh Doing this album, doing Shield Brother, was definitely uh, a uh, jumping into the deep end because we have at least four vocal styles, all different. <laughs> and and then, all layered. All layered. All layered. And then violins, uh, three to four guitars <laughs> throughout, and uh, yeah, drums and bass, various keyboards. Like in every song, um, is that it? That's probably it. Oh, and mandolin uh, from time to time, <laughs> and and one, those guitars. Yeah. What? Well, one thing I want to know is so, so Tim earlier said he so you know Danny was offering to mix a complicated album for free. Um, this is not just us tooting our own horn. I'm not saying that we're sitting there shredding and we're playing technical death metal or anything like that. It's just very dense. Right. Yeah, we, we have dense, a very yes. dense style. Like, like, oh, and we I had like 16 vocal tracks, which we had to because we're not good at singing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, fuck. <laughs> our secret, our secret shame. <laughs> so, the, the problem, I get, I suppose, with, uh, with mixing the, the, the stuff I ran into, I'm not a professional, you know, I, I did. I did what I you did because that's how I know how to do it, <laughs> you know. Um, you have to carve out room for everything. And those guitars take up all the room, uh, as do the vocals. So everything's fighting with each other. So well, I had... The violins, the violins and the vocals sit in the exact same frequency range. And the guitars are there too, and there's some drums there. <laughs> You know, so it's all, yeah, like every, everyone wants to be in the same, the same part of the, uh, the house. If, if the mixing is the house, you know, it's like when you have too many people in the kitchen and you're trying to open the oven and why did I turn this into a baking analogy? But <laughs> so, so when I was mixing, like once you get something set and get everything else to fit relative to that you can't really change it right so once everything was sort of into place i remember someone at one point said you should change the guitar tone and i said that cannot be done <laughs> so um and same with the snare getting the snare to fit in with violins and guitars and vocals you know it was, it was um yeah, it was it was difficult. So uh there was all manner of side chaining compression. So uh so everything can fit in the room at the same time when they need to fit in the room at the same time. So uh yeah, so mixing was an absolute nightmare. Uh and I've said this many times. <laughs> I will say it again. I listened to that album so many times I hated it. I couldn't listen to it. Uh, when it was done, I couldn't listen to it for months and months, maybe even a year. So, um, but you, you know, the, the one, uh, great thing about me mixing it 
is I can produce any version of it I want now. So, uh, so when we made the instrumental version, like, you know, I, I didn't have to write to anyone and please, please make us an instrumental. I just, you know, I muted the vocal bus and I had to tweak some compressors, but, um, uh, the, uh, one, one secret thing I did, (laughs) which I'm not sure if you want to know this, but I do, (laughs) uh, to thicken the violins, I duplicated the track and overdrove put it put it through a tube screamer so the violins are overdriven they sound good thank you i mean it it, (laughs) i i typically do a mid boost but that's effectively the same thing yeah the the tube screamer like compresses a little mid boost yeah i i really like i really like plugins that you can just use with almost no tweaking so mm-hmm. like I I have a, a completely ridiculous compressor that I like to use because it's just got two knobs. So I can't sit there fiddling twenty different. Oh, I parameters. totally agree. One of, one of the compressors I love to use is the Waves AXX because it has two knobs basically. <laughs> like done and done, can't fuck it yeah, up. Keep keep it simple. Uh they're not a sponsor, but they can be. <laughs> So, uh, so after that nightmare was over, so I mixed it in, yeah, record time because I worked on it every single day, nonstop for probably a month, maybe tops. I I will say that it was was weeks to a month, but every day, weeks to a month. So, so Tim solicited frequent feedback in the, in the interest of like, let's, we, we need to get this fucking done. Let's not talk about this endlessly. What's the problem? And it, I remember I got to the point where I was like, do I really want to do this to this poor man? Um, <laughs> you know, do, do I really yes, care about this yes. that much? <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I brought it, up- it did became like, yeah, it, 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 you had to threshold your critiques. Yeah. It's like, how much do you give a shit? And, I, and I, I'm pretty sure most of my critiques were like, there might be like one thing that I cared a lot about. And then the rest of it was like, eh. You know, so it, it, the the first pass I thought was quite good. Also, also uh, one one way I mix. I don't know if this is like this is probably is not best practice, but uh, I every the whole album is in one file. <laughs> so if you say you know boost the highs here, it changes it for the whole album. <laughs> so unless unless you automate it, of course, and I do that where necessary, but um. <laughs> So that that's interesting that you say that because I thought one of the points of getting the album mastered afterwards is to bring all of the individual mixes together and make them sonically more similar. Yeah, but they they are going to be different because you know right for sure because yeah because you're going to stand in a slightly different place yep. when uh, Nick comes over the second time. <laughs> you know but 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 i do agree with that because like i i have templates for my projects so that you know i bring everything in with the exact same you know eq and compression that i've used on all the other tracks but having it in one file it's an interesting workaround i wish i remembered what uh guitar amp uh i used you know so because you know guitarists they all they like to do is argue about tone so um I I cannot speak to which uh Mike had to let the cat in. That's <laughs> Did that show up on the No, you can't Sorry. even see. it's cropped yeah. out. Uh, so, so Mike walked away to open the door to let the cat in and uh Jeez. that was a treat only for us. That's not even on the the YouTube or the uh available to the twatchers. <laughs> she she's she's very insistent so um so anyway albums mixed finally hooray um and then i said i'm done (laughs) i never want to hear this again i listened to it 30 times 60 times 70 times straight through um here you go so how did we get dan swano to master it (laughs) uh well (laughs) So, I mean, you had you had punted the mixed tracks over, 
And then there was just a lot of silence in in the Slack. And I was like, I just want to get this thing out. Like, we've put a shitload of work in it, and I just want to set a, a freaking date. And I want to get it out so that people can listen to it, because it's... We've just been pushing this stone up the hill forever. Um, so I started looking into mastering, right? And um, obviously, like, Dan Swano has a great resume and stuff, but he also lists his prices on his website. And yes, that is very valuable. I, so I, many I people that. don't list their prices. Like, yeah, they're like, contact us for prices, and then you do, and yeah. they go... Uh, That's code for you can't afford it. Yeah, usually well, that, that was the case. Well, that was the case for most of the PR companies I contacted. But like Dan Swano had those prices there, which was a how we knew we could afford him for mastering, and b how we knew we couldn't afford him for mixing. Right. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And, and and it, it doesn't Next help time. that I fucking love Dan Swano. So it was like, do you guys want? Dan Swano to do our mastering? I was like, yes. And so, and yes this is also at the point. <laughs> right, this, this is the point where, like, if anyone remembers, we did the Kickstarter because yes, I was you know, about we, to bring we had done the recording. So this is the point where we we started um, putting our hat out for people to help us pay for this part. Yeah, the, right. the mix was done, and we had done everything for free up to this point. Now, now money needs to happen. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, so we ran the Kickstarter. When I world, so I also in this mix is the pandemic. So when did everything shut down? I know it was after I was done mixing. It was after you were done, and it was after the album, right? Was it? it well, it was kind no. of during the album because we were gonna play that show. Oh with insomnium that's and right omnium gonna, gatherum yep and that was going to be basically like right around the album release so we were just going to go all out for that and like that was the first tour that got shut down for covid yeah they that's were right. they, they were, sucked for them because they they were here they were in they the country one show they played what they played the show before ours right i think it was a couple days before it was the philly show um yeah, they got like, like one Russia show played and opening for them. Yeah, they so then, they were they were on the on the East Coast, you know, in the country. Whole thing gets shut down. We had to refund tickets. That's I've I, never I, had to I do still, that. I think I still have an envelope with like a hundred tickets or fifty tickets in it or something. Oh, we we should. I went uh, I went and picked up the physical tickets. You know, hmm. that that was going to be such a good show. So Dan Swano, back to him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how'd we get here? Yeah, right. No, I mean, so like it, his communication was great. It was super prompt. Um, he let us work through a couple of revisions, which was awesome. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I remember. Oh, we still have the audio file mix, don't we? We have the loud mix. And we the have, audio well, file. That's for the 10 yeah, year so anniversary. We, yeah, so we have we have the the CD mix which is the loudest of the mixes. He he also gave us like a a streaming services mix which is slightly less compressed I think and he also like tweaks some of it for the way Spotify will compress it. And then we have like the high fidelity high dynamic range vinyl master essentially. Yes, that was 24 bit 192 kilohertz yeah that's well that's the one i uh I, rep, do I, I i put that one in flack so that's the one i listened to <laughs> I, when i was able to listen to it again that's that's the version i listened to but I, I that is not have, the version that's out there <laughs> we have special versions of the album <laughs> yeah so i we'd love yeah, to we release listen to it. slightly quieter versions than the rest <laughs> of everyone can <laughs> well the uh we can come back to uh the vinyl discussion <laughs> but um uh yeah so he did a great job um 
he definitely listened to everything we you, you know because it was iterative one yeah. of the uh we had like options like which of these do you like and i, th- I think we all went with the loud but not too loud version <laughs> well no so at, at first he gave us a t- uh what I considered to be a too loud version. And then I did ask him to turn this, like the loudest version down a little bit. And he was like, yes, happily. Cause he, <laughs> he, he sells like loudness or t-shirts on his, on his store. So he's, he's all about like striking that balance between you don't have to turn your car up, like your car volume up 50% when the song comes on and also just not compressing it to hell. So on, so at, I think in conjunction with that, we started working on the booklet and uh, for the CD version. So I remember, so I, I am one of the few remaining people that insists on buying CDs. <laughs> so um, I, I like making the CD package special. So the booklet that comes with the CD is ridiculous. <laughs> it has... Um, does all the lyrics, which shouldn't be surprising. Uh, it's full color throughout, but it also has explanations. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, even, why haven't I you unwrapped think... it? Well, my, Mike's copy of the but CD is still in its cellophane. It's it's because he's listening to the the highest fidelity band right. only version. He doesn't need right. this low five bullshit on CD. <laughs> I, downloaded, I downloaded it off a of, uh, cause it. What's it? Kazaa, yeah, <laughs> LimeWire. I downloaded it off of Napster. Fuck, fuck you. I'm actually. I paid for this shit. On Napster because Napster's legit now. Are we on Napster? <laughs> fuck you, sellouts. I ain't paying for you. <laughs> we're on. We're on like everything. So I wouldn't be surprised if. Well, I would be surprised if Napster. I'm not gonna pay to listen to it. <laughs> so, yeah. So the booklet, uh, has all the uh. That's all the song explanations written by Nick. Uh, I I love that. Tear did that. Sorry, Tour did that. And, uh, you know, I was like, we have to do that. We also, there's thanks lists. There's like Mike's paragraph of everything he played in it. (laughs) (laughs) It was a whole thing. My favorite uh, feature of the CD version is the CD is the cover artwork with the shield brothers on it but then you why don't, take, why don't you show people then then you take because mike's copy's wrapped and mine's all the way over there <laughs> so uh but then you take the cd out and under it is the same artwork without the shield brothers because the shield brothers are in your cd player <laughs> so you, you know these are all good reasons to i i we we sold a surprising amount of CDs, you know, considering it's 2020. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we, I think we're at less than half left of the original pressing we got. So, yeah, that, like if that's not a, a call to urgency, <laughs> you know, hey, hey, we're running out of CDs. Yeah, I, I mean, you can order I, yours from isenmore.bandcamp.com. That's i s e n m o r dot bandcamp.com. Not, not to toot my own horn, and maybe this is a good segue into the next section, session, you know, or the next piece of this. Well, but we're not giving you horn credits. The booklet's finalized. <laughs> um, but but the, the after the release, the reception of this album has been pleasantly positive. Like I, you know, you always think that your own shit is like amazing, right? And we've actually, I mean, they haven't been like. 100 percent album of the year oh you know, folk, every, folk metal.nl said it was album of the year that's true they said it was debut you. of the year we got like fourth overall in album of the year that's still right. pretty I'll, like i i am i am happy with the, the reviews that got they're they're generally positive you know there's a few critiques here and there which i think are valid you know it, it's not like when we released our ep and there was that one review that was Saying like we were the end of the end of folk metal. Uh, <laughs> that that review is one of my favorites. <laughs> um, I've seen I, some. So, ter- I'm I'm proud to say that even considering all the bad reviews, uh, I've gotten 
for my releases over the year over the years i the worst review of anything i've put out is not the worst review of something i've ever read by a band i know (laughs) yeah i i was like trolling through metal archives the other day and just like looking at a bunch of bands whose albums i love and they're sitting at like 58 percent because there's a bunch of people doing like you know nice fair reviews like 60 70 80 percent and then someone's just like six percent i hate this (laughs) and it's like it's like In Flames discography basically sits there. <laughs> uh, for for regular pos- podcast and down listeners, I do need to point out the body count is still not on the Metal Archives. All right. C- continue. <laughs> it's a travesty. So, uh, <laughs> where were we? Booklet. Yeah. So... I'm very proud of the booklet. It was it was a nightmare to format. So that's another thing we did ourselves because of money. So oh, that's, that's another perfect. thing Tim did ourselves. Right. <laughs> so I and I'm pretty sure I w- it wouldn't surprise me if if you can find a typo in that in that booklet. If you can find one, uh, I believe there's one or two. Let me know and I'll send you like a free guitar pick or something because uh, the I, I've been paranoid about it ever since Gather Darkness came out. Gather Darkness is based on this is a Burning Shadows album based on a book by Fritz Lieber. And if you read the liner notes, I I spelled Fritz Lieber's name wrong. Which, by the way, when that album came out and I didn't know you were working on it, I was reading Gather Darkness by Fritz Lieber. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I don't know cool. what cosmic coincidence that is. But yeah, I was like, I was reading this and I saw on Facebook, it's like, my new album, Gather Darkness. That's weird. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I I like went through that thing, the, 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 the Eisenhower booklet, which is the longest book booklet i've ever (laughs) worked on uh and i'm pretty sure there are still two typos in it despite going over it and over it and over it and over it well but we did also correct some of the written lyrics to match what was actually sung that's Uh, right yeah Mm -hmm. i I do always find that amusing when you read a lyric book and it's like you're looking over the lyrics it's like that's not what you said yes but now having (laughs) helped make a lyric book i completely understand how. absolutely (laughs) yep (laughs) You, you get the to lyric, the studio. It was just what I was supposed to say. <laughs> you get to the studio, you <laughs> sing it, and you either forgot or you were like, that sounds like bullshit. Let's try something else. <laughs> All right. So at this point, we got a big bill from uh, Dan Swano. <laughs> we got an ambitious booklet, uh, which raises the cost significantly of pressing a CD. <laughs> so it's not a CDR. It's a real Glassmaster pressed CD. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, so we had to do a Kickstarter because, uh, you know, to, uh, Mike spent all his money on this Taylor, mm-hmm. <laughs> Mike, the, the <laughs> guitar, true. not not a person who. <laughs> well, that too. I mean, clearly my clothes are custom tailored to me. This Census 2010 shirt. Yeah, you're I... you're a Census behind. What the hell? It's <laughs> me. He's just a big fan of census. My mom worked for the Census Bureau, so I have all this census swag. I got 2020, I got 2010, somewhere I think I have a 2000. Of all the government things to have swag. (laughs) We like counting! (laughs) (laughs) Mark spent all... So anyway, Mark spent all his money on violin microphones. You know, uh... Strings. Oh, yeah, uh, uh... Never complained to Mark about the cost to restring a bass. <laughs> Cause, Ain't uh, nothing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> compared that's to as much as one violin string costs. So, and then uh, Nick spent all his money on that beer stein. <laughs> so we need we need money to finish the album. So yeah, the Kickstarter. That's... Here comes the Kickstarter. And I wait, I spent all my money on cutting my face apart. That was a big, big piece of this. That, that was after. Know. That was that. Well, yeah, but that doesn't work for the joke, though. <laughs> All right, try again. Try it again. I uh, oh, take two. No, it's no. Okay. Do it. Uh, cutting my face apart. All right. 
<laughs> so. Nailed it. All right, so the kick just like your face. So the Kickstarter, I we set the goal at the minimum to make. Uh, I think well, well, I think our goal was the minimum to clean out the bank account and have the CD. Is that is that accurate? And pay back yeah. somewhat of what we had already. Because I think Mark and I went halvesies on. Is it PR? Yeah, like PR, and we we fronted a bunch of the costs. That's right. It was like that, you know. I threw some of those music, like the lyric videos, in there and stuff too. Uh so yeah, this is all big one ball of the album's done. <laughs> we all have it, uh, and now now we have to get it to everyone else. And uh, you know, I'm not about uh, going. Hey, here's the album. <laughs> You know, you gotta, you gotta make it an event. So we did that and we, uh, wanted to do it right. So we did, so we got, we chose singles. We did artwork for the singles. And by we, I mean me and Mark, right? <laughs> yeah. There's some lyrics. gotta chop things up. Lyric videos. We wanted to do, uh, uh music videos and, you kind of did. There, there's some playthrough videos. Well, Nick, Nick and I did more of a music video for Drink to Glory. Yeah, but, so... but You uh, know, a handheld GoPro music video. Yeah, but there was and, a... Unfortunately, there was a pandemic on. I don't know if you uh, <laughs> remember, so... It kind of limited our ability to film much. I I like what Liquid Tension Experiment did. It's, it's like a playthrough with some... Uh, with some, like liquidy transitions <laughs> yeah I mean, well, there you we go here's a music some, video hypersonic like that yes yeah, so. oh yeah that one <laughs> what song are we playing fewer two times Fury, yeah and oh that I, oh yeah yeah that was that was brilliant so i think I, this was, I, was separate from everything wasn't it i looked yeah. at myself after that video i was like man i look way more pissed off than yeah, i felt you look, while making you look pissed or bored or <laughs> miserable or I, something i didn't i think i was just so focused that i was just like and then i looked back i was like wow so yeah this, so this was separate from everything <laughs> so, um so we did a stay-at-home playthrough of fear teutonicus song from the new album and i think it was the first time anyone had heard the song and uh online pro well no because we we well, had other them. than playing it live yeah uh, no, I, I, we I have a live video of that first. Yeah, we have a live video of it. Yeah, but who's going to watch that? <laughs> uh, there's some guys banging on fucking glasses in their yeah. living room. So that yeah, was brilliant. Obviously, he can't set up his drum kit in his apartment. Oh, That's rude. I wonder how Nick tastes. <laughs> I, I should really. Well, I told you, I did that half marathon, so delicious and salty. <laughs> salty. <laughs> Did you do a half marathon or did you half do a marathon? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Drive, drive oh, to wow. the end. You got to a certain point. Fuck it. I'm done with this. this no, is no the, the plan was to just do the, the half from the start, so I didn't. Okay, I didn't so you up. did a half marathon. <laughs> I, like the, I really like this idea of half doing a marathon. Right? You sign up for a marathon, then you bail out. You half start walking. You're like, Fuck you, wa this. You, you start walking, you go to a bar. You take a shortcut. <laughs> well, you, you should read about the uh, the St. Louis Olympics in the uh, early 20th century. Yeah, uh, that's basically what happened. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like it's like the marathon's a big loop. So you just like cut through a bar. You wait an hour or two. You get to the <laughs> you get to the finish line. You're like, oh, I did it. It was me. Yeah, mm, that was tough. <laughs> fall over because you're so drunk okay Perfect. so <laughs> 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 all right so last year the the let's reset the <laughs> coronavirus pandemic has shut everything down uh we're getting a kickstarter together we did the uh the stay at home video for fury teutonicus we chose some singles to do to release ahead of the album 
Uh, was that during the kick? That was after the Kickstarter. No, that was during yeah. the Kickstarter, right? Battle Scarred was during the Kickstarter. The other singles were after. Yeah, so... Because the Kickstarter ended, like, in August, and then the Shield Brother release date was October. So, much to our surprise, the Kickstarter got fully funded in, like, a day. <laughs> so, I, I was positive we were going to have, you know, a long slog begging people to get to the end. F- funded immediately. <laughs> what? This is amazing. Um, so then we had to start thinking of stretch goals. So, uh, question for Mark. Was Super Shield Brothers an original perk? Or was that a stretch goal? It refresh my memory. That So that was an original perk because right, it was so something that we could make. I think we need to highlight mm. Super Shield Brothers. So this was a Kickstarter exclusive entirely done by Mark. Um, and it's great. <laughs> so, Even though Tim hates it. Right. Like, it's everything I hate about folk metal. But I love Super Shield Brothers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So how about you, t- you, you? Where'd you get the idea? So what is it? How about what is it? And where'd you get the idea? And how'd you do it? And um, and why well, is it so, so awesome? <laughs> we have all the MIDI, right? Because we do we do all the writing and guitar pro. And there 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 have already been bands that came out with like you know eight bit versions, and you know Ailstorm does their dog vocal versions and whatever. Um, and I was like, I yeah, like uh, I said, this is. All- this is everything I hate about folk metal, except for when we mm-hmm. do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I just spent like a couple afternoons coming up with different. It, it's not actually like 8 bit or 16 bit, but I just came up with a, a bunch of different instruments, basically, that I could plug in for each track. And then I was basically able to just create a template with all of the instruments laid out and then just like clone that and just drop all the all the MIDI on it. And then, like, a little bit of tweaking, and then I had to put, like, the solos in that we'd written after the fact and stuff. <laughs> but I, I really like it. I think it sounds great. So I think, uh, I think it, I think we decided it sounded more 16-bit <laughs> than 8-bit. Yeah, oh, it, it, it is high-res, and I am using a 16-bit VST. So we couldn't call it 8-bit. Right. So this- Which is why it's Super Shield Brothers instead of... And the, the, the cover looks Super Nintendo-y. Yeah, and like, well, and I originally made a, I think, yeah. So I, I originally made an NES cover for it, and you were like, no, it's Super Shield Brothers, so it has to be a Super Nintendo game cover. And I was like, oh uh, yeah, I, I was I, like, get off my back. Regular was listeners Mario? know how pedantic I, I tend to be. So. Mario One was Super Mario Brothers, though, wasn't it? Am I wrong? I, for, I forget why I insisted on Super Shield Brothers uh, being. It might have, it might have been because we were sixteen bidding it or what? I, I, yeah, they had like, oh like, yeah, the Castlevania. Console. Yeah, I was like, uh, you said sixteen yeah, bit, and uh, Nintendo was eight bit. <laughs> Mario By the way, one. my Nintendo still works, and I'm very proud of this. Mario One is Super Mario Brothers. I'm just saying. It right, is. but then it was like yeah, once was, Super Nintendo came up, everything else was Super whatever like. You had, you know, Super. Castlevania, and then Super Castlevania 4, or like... What I, or what I remember Super having scope. a very good argument. Uh, well, I'm very proud of the uh, the result. <laughs> so. I think so, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> Even though I didn't do any of it. This is a worthless aside. <laughs> it, is. It, it also sold some copies of the album on the Kickstarter. Yeah, so... Uh, so then... Uh, yeah, so if you didn't get it, uh, that's it. You can't get it. That's it. <laughs> that's, um, you know, uh, back the next one, and maybe we'll make that a perk again. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, the uh, the mounds of riches <laughs> that we got from releasing this aren't enough to release another one. So, we, <laughs> like... Uh, spoiler, we're probably going to have to do another Kickstarter for the next album. Unless we get sponsored, you know, uh, Honda presents Eisenmore. Honda presents Mike Wilson's Eisenmore. It's perfect. 
We had to, you know, pay for all of the Kickstarter fulfillment merchandise and stuff. We're, Tim, we're finally going to be able to bring fries and more to life. Yes! Sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to edit out all the heavy, heavy breathing from fries and more, though. <laughs> or, or, or emphasize. Or uh, better. So... <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> so I believe our first stretch goal <laughs> was instrumental copy of the album. Is that accurate or no? Uh, I think that's accurate. Yeah, so that one was relatively easy to make. I, I, I like the instrumental version. I, there are certain family members, extended family members, who like our music, but not when they're screaming. So, yes. you know, so there are fans of the instrumental version. They're like, this is great. Why, why don't you just write like this always? Because <laughs> it's metal. I, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> so. I, yeah, so stretch goal one was instrumentals. Stretch goal two was acoustic bonus tracks. Yes, so the acoustic bonus. So now we had to we had to start something from almost nothing again. <laughs> so... Uh, so, so sorry to derail again. Uh, speaking of the the harsh vocals, there was one review that was that was ragging on us for how like how brutal it was. Were they not? Which I they were like, it's just so aggressive. I don't understand. <laughs> Do you remember this? This they, is not an EP. We got so many reviews. If it wasn't, you know, if it was, if it was just an average review, I didn't read it. Cause, there was cause one we got so many was, of them. They're, like yeah. I like reading the good ones and the bad ones. Yeah, the the one was was really upset, or seemed very upset by how aggressive our style was. And I didn't really think that Eisenmore is super aggressive. I mean, we're not light, but it was like, oh, there's just the screaming is so in your face. That's, that is what we were going. For. Well, yes, <laughs> that's <laughs> what we you. were trying to do. Exactly. <laughs> I see you here. You marked off points for that. <laughs> so anyway, acoustic second, tracks. So now we had yeah. to do some acoustic tracks. So how did we? So, uh, we settled on Wanderlust and Mount Baden, right? Yeah. So how did we settle on those? Oh, I think they were. You just know what? The I, most. There was something else. Uh. We'll come back to it. I'll write it down so we don't forget. So, acoustic tracks. <laughs> yeah, they were, those were just the two tracks that I think lent themselves most to being acoustic. We we discussed a lot of them because because well, we discussed like, Sigurd's two. Yeah, Sigurd's two would work, but it's it's almost it's almost acoustic as is, really. Well, but it has the screaming parts, and oh, we didn't want to do the screaming parts with the acoustic tracks. So uh, Imper Imperium does it. We might as well. <laughs> So, that's what i said <laughs> mount mount baden was obvious like yeah when you're listening to the album you can just go oh this one would translate well wanderlust we had to there's a screamy bit we had to oh and pete did it yeah and pete did it so there's even more that's pete awesome. <laughs> on, uh, yeah he does a really good job i agree he also uh replaced nick's scream at the end of wanderlust with a with the clean vocal line, and he and he recorded that solo on an acoustic, which I'm sure was a pain in the ass. Yeah, well, so he recorded the harmonized solo on the acoustic, and then I doubled that on the violin as well. And I think that sounds really, really neat. It does. Yeah. So. Uh, and that's also going to be kind of how we play it live. Yeah, so that's how unless, we... Unless we get two Pete's. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how the acoustic tracks came to be, because we were like, uh, we did the obvious one, and then we did the less obvious one. Um, and uh, they both work great, I think. So, uh, so then we blew through that goal, and then we were approaching another stretch goal, and I think we fell just short. But still, with all this stretch nonsense we still couldn't afford vinyl like it 
I, I think it's flabbergasting that uh, so many bands put out vinyl because it, it, it is not cheap. It is. I like, completely agree. Like to put out vinyl would have cost several times more than it cost us to do the whole album. <laughs> so yeah, and this is without since... booklets and you, you know this is just a, a sleeve and a sticker with the with color on it. You know, and I th- I think this album uh. We we looked into it in depth. And didn't it have to be a double? LP? It would have to be a double because we're like two minutes too long. And even if you remove some songs, uh, they like don't divide. Sigurd's right? song, yeah, they don't divide right. And Sigurd's song is one side on itself. If you're squeezing it in there, yeah, we we very much looked into this. Uh, we Someday. also we looked into lathe cut as well to do a short run but uh i got a test pressing from somewhere and uh no we're (laughs) we're not letting you waste your money on (laughs) um on a crappy version of a vinyl vinyl supposed to sound better we got a special master for it so (laughs) right uh yeah so that's out the door so then uh the other kickstarter thing was uh the two exclusive intro tracks, which I totally forgot about until now. <laughs> I was going to bring them up. Yeah, so the yes, intro track. Where did those come from? I think uh, I wrote one and Mike, you wrote the other. Yeah, so Gallerhorn was something that we used to play live. Um, and it's just this like minute and a half or two minute long intro uh, that Tim wrote. Uh, and it's just it's just kind of like this cool, you know. You know, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to base a song on, right? But it was just kind of like an introduction, and it starts with guitars and uh, the horns. I love the horns, and um, and some violins, and it's like something epic's about to happen. Right. Hopefully, that epic thing is the Eisenmore set. So, so the other for the longest time was called set intro. <laughs> yeah, which we've never used. Well, we I were going to use it, but we haven't done a show since. <laughs> so I was on a since plane since the before times. I was on a plane and I was really bored, so I started trying to come up with something Eisenmore, and I wrote it. And I think the version on Guitar Pro has like four guitars, and they're all harmonized and. So we had to drop some of that for the recording, <laughs> um, j- just so it was more realistic to play live. But I think it, I think it will make a pretty cool intro when we can actually do yeah, it. Yeah, so it's the same idea as Geller. Yeah, it's called uh, Day Grima, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank- and I didn't name Nick it. Came, you, Nick came you're... up with the name because it sounded uh, like Dawn. Yeah, I think Dawn that's a cool of idea. Battle or something. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I really be, like that. That'll be fun to play one day. You know, maybe <laughs> we'll do it at our uh, CD release show. <laughs> yeah, for the second anniversary of Shield Brother. Right. Yep. <laughs> at this rate. So. All right, so See, pose- and I'm all for doing the shows now because lots of people dying from a disease after gathering is fits with our theme. It does. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. True, true. <laughs> So we got the Kickstarter done. Everything's great. We got it out. People bought it and supported it during the pandemic, knowing they won't see us. So uh, here we are a year later. Uh, it's still available. We're Like I said, we're running out of copies. Uh, the. Um, the. Uh, I still have special picks and posters left we're running out <laughs> uh yeah so Couple uh signed ones left oh, do we oh man yeah so that was a whole thing uh, that, so one of the one of the packages involved getting a signed copy of the album so we had to oh, i meet. forgot about that yeah me too well, some, we, yeah some people ask for signed copies we had to meet to sign like dozens and dozens of copies of uh the album so we had to do in it october like, yeah right. which at the to... time meeting meant being on a deck 
not being allowed to come close, not being allowed to go near the door to the house. Otherwise, Tim's wife would probably come at us with a frying pan. (laughs) We have many. (laughs) Yeah, and I had to, everyone came over in stages because of availability. And then, oh, and then I spent like two days, two or three days packaging all the CD orders. And then, oh, they were happy to see me when I got to the post office. (laughs) I was like, hey, here you go. That was fun. (laughs) Like, I sound like I'm complaining, but I'm not. (laughs) It was a great problem to have. Look at all these CDs we have to sign. Look at all this. Well, all these packages we have to pack. I think the problem is more the logistics of it during the pandemic. It basically kind of with all this stuff, it just localizes where the pain has to be because it's like, you know, it's like we can we need a central place to meet. We need a place where we feel safe, you know, so it makes sense. Absolutely. So, uh, for the one year anniversary, uh, we are releasing one of those (laughs) bonus tracks. Just one. You don't get the others. You don't get super shield brother. (laughs) You you, You know, you, uh, the Wanderlust acoustic track hopefully coming out. Hopefully it's out by the time this is out. <laughs> As usual, we're debating artwork at the moment. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you have, so you have eight people in the streaming. You, you have seven to eight people in the band. You have seven to eight opinions. I'm counting myself twice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, you have that to look forward to. To celebrate the one year anniversary. Right. Add, so, I, yeah. One thing I thought about that I wanted to add about uh, the mastering process. Uh, so a comment that we got from Dan Swano after we reviewed the music the first time. was like, well, this is very well mixed. So, oh, yeah. I was, I was so and, happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, <didn't say> that. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that. The, the Tim's efforts were uh, were recognized here. <laughs> yeah, well, like it's great of him to say that, but it was also very surprising to me of <laughs> him to say that. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was all worth it. Do you have any closing thoughts, anyone, other than uh, please, please, <laughs> uh, buy buy it if you don't already have it. Uh, follow us on Bandcamp, follow us on Spotify. Links are in down in whatever description uh, your device is supporting. <laughs> so, What else? I, I, we, we are working on new material, but it's slow going because we can't really meet up. So yeah. I don't know when another album is going to come. <laughs> yeah, it, it might take us just as long, but it will be for different reasons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're not going to let it sit this time. <laughs> So. Yeah, we'll, we'll record it fast. I just don't know that we'll generate the material as fast. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know. We could just do an EP. Eh. Eh. <laughs> well, we did have an EP in mind, but that's not what we've been writing for. <laughs> so. True. Yeah. So there, there is a long-term plan. So, uh, yeah, patience. <laughs> it it takes a lot of time to mix uh, stuff. Uh, dense enough and complicated enough for Mike to approve of it. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it the truth. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening. Check out Eisenmore wherever uh, your Eisenmore dealer is. <laughs> and, uh, Probably Eisenmore.bandcamp.com Yes, that is, that is the preferred location. Everything else is just, you know, an afterthought. So... <laughs> Uh, if I may resurrect an old Eisenmore saying, Wes Hall, drink Hall. Podcast them down. <laughs>